YouTube, my name's Lance and welcome to Bundy Bear Shed. Well, this little video is going to be about um, fixing up the steering on our John Deere 2030 here. Now, the John Deere 2030, it's about 70 horsepower, engine horsepower, um, four cylinder diesel, um, great little tractor, they've got power steering, wet disc brakes, um, wet PDO clutch and, and closed centre hydraulics. So, um, it's a good tractor. Um, I have this one for just doing my slashing around the paddock here um, and just keeping our little property here in order. Um, the slashing, I suppose overseas you call it topping, where we have a machine on the back and we just mow the grass off. So, um, what happens is on the front end of these tractors, in under the axle, you have a pitman arm or a drag link, the pitman arm comes out of the steering box and there's a drag link goes up the front and then there's a three boomerang, there's a, there's a casting, uh, an arm with three levers on it like a boomerang and one lever comes up the side of the tractor to turn, to, to push in forward and rearward motion this boomerang and when it pushes there's a tie rod right end going out to each wheel so when it pushes the wheels go to the right when it pulls the wheels go to the left so to have that boomerang there underneath it has to have a pivot and on the pivot um, what they've done over the or what John Deere did when they designed it is they have a, a pin that's approximately one inch round I think um, I'll measure that up later and make sure but it looks to be about that and then in the housing they have two needle bearings and over time because people don't grease it or um, or the needle bearings just collapse um, these two needle bearings the top and bottom needle bearing they just collapse and, and with steering if you go straight ahead a long time and or yeah the movements very slight well the ball the needle bearings get to wear into the shaft and, and look the bearings collapse that puts a lot of slop in your front end and my tractor at the moment it's I've had this tractor I bought it second hand not going I, I got it going and um, the steering's been an issue it's been there all along and I've just finished a big circuit of mowing and I've decided it's time to do it so we'll wheel the front end out and we'll replace the bushes on the boomerang and we'll have a look at the the pivot pins and all that but before starting any of these jobs um, you have to have a bit of a, a bit of a game plan on doing it and the game plan with every tractor when you're going to pull wheels off or anything like that is disconnect your battery terminal um, the reason is that you can't bump something the engine can't start mistakenly um, you can't burn something out if you rub a wire or something like that so so the first part of the job is always undo the battery. The battery in this tractor is in behind here. And so we will be doing that. And another thing, to get the front axle out, there's two pins. The front pin is hollow with a bolt through it. And that bolt holds the axle in, clamps it in, and the back one just works as a pivot. So what we need to do is jack the whole front of the tractor up using a board under the sump, jack the whole tractor up until we can just walk that front axle back and forth easily on the pin. At that stage um, we undo the bolt and we can wheel the axle out and once the axle's out we're going to use the forks on the forklift because we have it but um, other times we just walk them out with a crowbar down near the tie rod end. Also, before you pull the axle out, loosen your tie rod ends off because once your axle is out the front there um, and you've got it pivoting on a couple of stands or something like that, it is hard sometimes to get the tie rod ends undone. So loosen the ones that you can while the axle's still in the tractor. Now, another important thing I've, I haven't mentioned, which I've, I should have done earlier, is when you're lifting the tractor up here, and you're getting ready to wheel your axle out, you need to chock your back wheels, front and rear of your back wheels. Because if you have the jack sitting up under your sump and something goes wrong, it wants to rock back or forth, um, 
by limiting the movement of the back wheel, you limit how far that tractor can move out of spec. So, um, when you disconnect your battery terminal, chop your rear wheels, front and rear. Um, the back, as you jack the tractor up, if the tractor is in neutral, it will just pivot on the axle and there's no need to do anything else. So, chop it tight, um, make sure that um, the jet is, you're covering your bases so if the jack slips or anything happens that, um, in, in that line of thought, um, that you're safe. Um, also, whenever you jack a tractor, use a safety stand, have a stand with the jack. As you jack up, just let the stand follow it up. Um, no one plans on anything going wrong, but it does. Yeah, <laughs> time to stop. <laughs> I've had my turn, and um, things do go wrong from time to time. So, so disconnect your battery terminal, chop your back wheels, then do everything else. So I'll follow along, I'll show you the slot in the front end. Um, I don't know that I'll show you how we undo all the tie rod ends, it's just a case of undoing the nut and, and putting a bit of weight on it. I'll probably show you one and the rest of this works the same as that. So look, follow along. Um, we'll show you this as, as one job and there's a few other jobs coming up on the little 2030 that I have um, in the pipeline as in just going over the steering column. They have a full power steering column with a heap of O-rings in it. And, well, I don't know. The tractor's a 1972 model, and who knows when that ever got done last. So, well, stay tuned. We'll try and um, make it informative so you can follow along, or you can have a crack at your own tractor. Um, this same job works for like a 1640, 2040, 2140, 2130, 3350, um, a lot of the Mannheim John Deere range, which is the utility tractor. So, so probably from 8.30, the, the German build 8.30. Um, well, I know the 3640 is the same. So a lot of the John Deere tractors made in Germany, um, this same thing will apply. Um, it's not four wheel drive, there's no drive shafts to undo, but even the four wheel drive models, same job really. Undo your battery, chop your wheels, undo your drive shaft in that case, jack your tractor up so the front axle, so you know you're right, and then the axle will come out and jack it up and you'll just wheel it away. So follow along. Um, any Mannheim John Deere, this will work for. So I'll see if I can make it interesting for you, eh? Okay, we're under the tractor. We have the wheels chopped. We have a jack going up here to a piece of hardwood that spreads the load at the back of the sump. And there's also a couple of nice thick housings here. We could go under here on a cast sump if you put a bit of board under it, but this is, I feel is a better option. And I have the jack with no ram sticking out at present because we're going to need a little bit of room to go up and I have a couple of bits of wood with another one on top this looks a bit ratty here but that's it's a tough board it's good so I've also come up to the front and I've gone around pulling the split pins out um, there's one here one up in the other side on that tie rod there so, we'll just continue on. I just thought I'd show you where we jack it, just in case. Now, <coughs> oh man. to get the tie rod end out here, what we've done is we've loosened this nut off, an inch and an eighth spanner fitted that. And that nut probably doesn't feel right for that, but anyway. So look, what you do, you loosen the nut, you put it back on. I have a crowbar here to put a bit of weight, and then we go in for a hit in the knee. There we go, that's nice and loose now. We leave it in there, we don't want it out yet, but go around all the tie rod ends that it's easy to get to and do that. After, actually I should have mentioned, after taking the split pin out, it has a split pin in here. Take the split pin out, undo the nut, leave it on. The reason you leave it on is so it doesn't drop away and damage your rubber, but the other thing is if you miss hit here, you're not smashing up the male thread. 
Um, if you do get a miss hit, you'll just hit the nut here and probably no harm will be done. Okay, we're laying under the tractor. That's our right hand front wheel. And when we come up, we have this bolt here. See all the slop there? That shouldn't be there. This is the bolt that holds the front axle in. I'll try and keep you in frame. That'll be something new. Um, yeah, this is the bolt that keeps the front axle in. That should not be slopping back and forth like that. We should be able to tighten that bolt up. Um, way tighter than that. Once again, inch and an eighth spanner will fit that. And there's a nut around the back. I don't know if we can get in there. Doesn't look like we can get in there to show you that. But what we do now is we undo this. I take the washers off. Then I put the nut back on. And then I jack the tractor until the axle can be pushed back and forth easy. You'll see this gap here will change and get bigger. So I'll get that happen. Right, I've undone the bolt. I've left the big washer on. And the front pin is part of the front axle. So by leaving this washer on, we can get movement there um, with the front axle here. And we can still do it safely without it dropping out, without us being ready to catch it. So what do we do now? We go down, get onto the jack and start jacking until we can easily move that front axle back and forth. Right, we have a stand there supporting the jack or assisting the jack. And we're going to jack this up just to take the weight of the tractor. And we'll get to a stage, where we close. We can move that front axle back and forth. I think I'll go a little bit further. There you go. I just felt a little chug in the back there, so that's a nice feel. The inner tie rod end I can see from here is loose anyway, which is something I didn't know. So what I'll do now, I'll go and get the forklift, we'll slide the forks under, I'll undo that bolt underneath completely, the axle will slide out, then we have to jack the tractor up so it clears the pins, so the front comes up, so there's enough room, once the pins are cleared, to take the axle out forwards. Okay, I've just got the forklift in, we're supporting the front axle here. Should be able to take the tractor up and sort of continue to clean it. side and then we'll let the we'll let the jack down onto the back stand here. There we go. Well, there you go. That's what a tractor looks like without the front axle. Now 
and here is the front axle on the fork and this pivot here where that should slop about that pivot's there where the trouble is so we'll sneak a bit further along I've decided to put this housing in the press and that bush that someone's made in the centre there um, because it's got a step in it I won't be able to make our normal long brass bush and push in so where they've put this housing this piece in here I'm going to try and press that whole thing back out and when we make our new bush we may do it in two pieces a steel a steel back with a bronze centre um, we'll just see what we go but we've got 50 tonnes of press here so we'll, we'll see if we can get it get that centre piece moving And you can see, I'll bring you around. You can see that it is just starting to go. I'll see if I can pump the handle in, hold the camera. We can see it on its way out the bottom there. So I'll keep pressing this, I'll give you a yell when it's done. Well there you go, I'm huffing a bit from, <laughs> from being up that handle on the press. Look it took a bit over 30 tonne to get this bush moved and if you can look down there you can see the step they put in for the needle bearings and so what the plan will be um, is I'll, make, I'll remake this with a Foss bronze bush in the centre. Look, if you're doing this job at home, hopefully you don't run into any of this. The, um, the normal job would be to push the bearings out, push them all one way, they do all go one way, and um, just put the bottom bearing in, then put the spacer in, then the other bearing, and away you go. So, anyway, this is going to be a bit of a long haul, this one, but anyway, we do like machining, so we'll make a new one of these, and we'll get it all sorted, and get, get it back in when we get a minute. Well I've been over in my scrap pile and I found a big hunk of 2 inch Foss bronze. Now the old bush is about 1.8, 1.808 OD. So this would be plenty enough. Seems a shame to have to bore an inch and a quarter hole in a, such a nice piece of bronze but looks like I bought it at a scrappy or somewhere for 25 bucks. So half the price of a John Deere bush anyway. Anyway look we'll chuck that in the lathe and we'll, we'll make our bush out of this. Just just because we have it here, I was going to put a steel bush, then a, a smaller bronze one in here, but this is what we have, this is what we'll use. Well, we turned up a bush out of that piece of Foss bronze, and we've pressed it back into the housing, and we've run oil grooves around it, and it's just a little bit undersized now, and when we pressed it in, it came a little bit undersized, so we'll just run a ream through it, and that should bring it out to the right size. Um, not much to take off, but um, we'll just give them a quick run through just to. It'll just be a small shiver, a sliver. It's easy for you to say. Hey. Look at that, how close was that? Tiny bit of movement, but that's the old shaft. We will be getting a new shaft to press in here, so that'll do for that bit. It's been about a week since we worked on this. We had to wait for parts and 
we have a nice new shaft here. It's an aftermarket part, but that's fine. It's, um, they're a good quality item. And that will replace this old crappy looking shaft there. So we need to support it. We need to support it right in, right in close on the flat. Now there's a circlip on here, an E-clip. Now sometimes if these are tight, no, this is okay. Sometimes you need to free them up a little bit first. As in, bump it around. Well, I dropped that bit. Pretty poor video that doesn't drop apart, though, eh, Ruby? Okay, we'll see how we go here. I don't think there should be much pressure, but. There we go. Flying out the needle. The needle on the top of the press is hardly actually moving. So it's only a matter of a couple of tonnes. Now before we get too excited about fitting the new one, let's make sure it's right. That looks pretty good. I think we're safe. Okay, we fly this over. It will sit pretty level there. And this piece here goes to the bottom to take a tab washer. So. That's going very easy. We'll just feel underneath so we know exactly when it's coming through. We have to have it through enough to put that circlip on or the snap ring. Close there. Maybe a little bit too much, but what we'll do is pop this circlip in or snap ring. Sure that's in the groove. Feels good. We might just go back down just a little bit until there's a little bit of pressure there on the circuit. I'm just turning the circuit a bit so I can feel that a little bit of load comes on. That's it, a little bit of load there. Right, so that shaft now should sit nicely in the bush we made. We'll go and try it. Well, here's this bush we made. We'll get this rag out of the way. 
There's no lubrication on that yet. Oh, don't you love that? That's good, that'll give us a nice steering. So we need to shim underneath here now, um, under the main frame where there was a D-shaped washer, we need to shim it so there's no up and down movement. And while we have it up here, there's a front pin here. We have a new front pin, so we'll make a jig to pull that out and put a new Next one in. part of our job is replacing this front pivot pin. We'll go back to the, the boomerang down underneath there later. Um, but we've turned this around in the vise and I've made a little a little tool and it consists of a pin. The pin is smaller than this pin, so the pin goes on the on the outside. I'll just come back a bit so you can see. The pin comes up underneath on this piece of threaded bar, threaded rod. Then we drop a a piece of pipe over the top a big old washer and then a nut and the idea that we're hoping to achieve there we go on the bottom of the pin here I've locked two nuts together just to, so I can hold it later with a shifting spanner, a crescent wrench. And what we're going to try and do is use this little homemade tool to pull the pin out that way. We only have to go this far and then being threaded bar, once we get the old pin out we should be able to use the same tool to extract the, or to fit the, the new pin. So we'll just put a fair bit of oil around the show. Probably don't need oil down the bottom there where I put it. We'll just try and centralise it all if we can. Now these have been known to be bloody tight. Feels like it's starting to move a bit. I'll continue on for a bit and I'll, I'll give you a yell when I'm a bit closer to the end and I'm huffing a bit more. Well we're, we're getting somewhere with it now. We can't be too much further to go. She's, <laughs> she's taking some wine and it's just getting nice and easy now though. Still a bit of effort but You can see the socket starting to get jacked up off it. So I think it should be loose enough now that I think I could bump it out. Oh, look at that. So there we go. One pin out. Now we'll tidy up the hole, tidy everything up. This is the, the puller that we had, the, the little spacer. That's the old pin with the wear on it. So we'll tidy all this up, we'll smooth that up with a flap wheel. So we have a nice smooth surface for it when it goes back in the tractor. We'll take the chamfer off, we'll put a little chamfer on the end here. Then we should be able to line the pin up and slowly start bringing him back in, in a similar manner. This is our pin. I've put 
I've filed the top off where the burr was. I've put a chamfer on it. The pin has a little chamfer on it already. And what we might try and do is use our tool here. Just try and get it started with the hammer. Out in the bush years ago, we used to just have to slog these in and slog these out until I made some some tools and um, yeah, it was just how it was. We were, that's what we were expected to do by the boss. That's going very easy. Okay, might be time to use the thread. We'll try and um, try and get him all set up. Well, there you go. I did keep flogging it in, and you take it until it's just flush at the back here. Now, there's a bolt. There's a big fat washer that sits at the back here, and a bolt that draws the whole axle forward through the housing. So it just needs to be flush, and then. There's a big washer on the front that stops it coming back out. So this piece here is pretty well finished. Okay, we're back under the 2030 and this is the rear front axle pivot pin. And look, I've just measured all that up and there's no measurable wear there. The bush was slightly worn, the brass bush. But um, I've made a choice, we're going to leave that pin there. Now on the front here, there's a brass bush. It's a steel backed brass bush and that's the new one. That's what the new one looks like. And the, the way to get that out is I just happened to have a little tool and I was just, just absolutely lucky that that's something from an old set of tools I bought one time. We don't know where it's from but it fits. It fits in the hole there just nicely so I'm going to use that and bash that with a hammer and put that one out. We're not going to put the other bush in like that though we're probably going to get a couple of washers, a washer each side and pull it in with a thread so we can have control and don't burr anything. So I'll try and knock this out and look it looks like it's going quite easy one handed it's a bit of a hassle but anyway One bush gone. We'll take this fella out. And this bush, he goes in with the grease hole lined up. But anyway, we'll go and get set up. I've had a bit of a change of heart. That other bush come out so easy. What we're going to do is put a washer over the front there and just bump that in. It feels like it's going to go nicely. So I'll put a bit of oil around it and give it a tap. But at this stage, pump some grease in. You'll see on my finger there, the plug of old grease. That's what you want to get out, make sure it's all fresh new grease and we'll just smother this with grease all inside the bush, all on the back pin and we'll go and get the axle and well, try and slide the axle back. put back in. We used the forklift because we could and that's right up, it's almost right up in here, there's still a, still a bit of a gap but at this stage we haven't got the safety bolt in and the safety bolt comes in through there so we'll put that in and then it can't fall out there. Well, there we have the bolt in now what we did there we put the bolt in we tightened it up as tight as we could to make sure the bush was pushed back properly and then under that washer make sure 
if there's any gaps there, put some shims in there. So what you want to be able to do is tighten the nut and bolt up, but not actually pull the axle real tight against the front. You still want it to be able to go back and forth easily. So this one here, the pin, um, come right up through, so we can tighten it up tight and still have a little bit of movement there. But don't forget to put the pin in, and while you go, you can actually turn this washer you can turn that around if it gets a bit worn. So, so all in all, that's the whole axle sitting back in with new bushes and one new front pin.